Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining me this week as uh, we will launch out into a requested topic. In fact, I mentioned some time back that I wanted to uh, unpack this particular prayer. And recently I was reminded uh, that I promised to do so. So I want to keep my promise and look at, I think, perhaps the second most important prayer that we can pray, second only to the, the Lord's Prayer. In fact, this particular prayer that we're going to talk about this week is, is part of the Lord's Prayer, or it is a derivative of the Lord's Prayer. And you see many of the principles in this particular prayer in the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. And the prayer of which I am talking about is the serenity prayer. And this week, our focus is going to be on the serenity prayer and how to have peace when life is going to pieces. The serenity prayer, first of all, let's look at what it says. So let's see what the serenity prayer says. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Now, we know those four lines, but if you continue to read or if you get the, the complete version of the prayer, there is more than those four very powerful lines. And those four lines, by the way, will be our focus for this week. But the prayer also says this, living one day at a time, which is what the Lord's Prayer teaches us, give us this day our daily bread, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, as it is. In other words, dealing with life the way life is. God help me to deal with reality as it is, not as I would have it trusting that he will make all things right. If I surrender to his will, and that's a very important word, we shall see the word surrender, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. Now, let me tell you something about this prayer. This prayer, the serenity prayer, was written by one of the great theologians of the American theologians of the 20th century, and his name was uh, Reinhold Niebuhr. And uh, Reinhold Niebuhr taught many years at uh, Union Theological Seminary, Martin Luther King Jr. In fact, if you ever read the letter from a Birmingham jail, he quotes Reinhold Niebuhr in that famous letter from the Birmingham jail, uh, Immoral Man and uh, Moral Man in Immoral Society. Reinhold Niebuhr was, uh, was a brilliant theologian, scholar, and philosopher. And he wrote this prayer during a time when people's life lives were going to pieces. He wrote it in the 30s. You know what was happening in the 1930s globally. And that was the Great the Depression. And during the Great Depression, everyone was under stress. And so he wrote this prayer as a pastor. He's a scholar and a theologian, but he wrote it as a pastor, giving us uh, a timeless blueprint on how to move our lives from stress to rest, how to move, uh, how to have peace when life is going to pieces. Now, the word serenity is called the serenity prayer because it starts off with the word serenity. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And serenity simply means this. This is what serenity is. Serenity is a sense of calmness. I'm calm. I'm calm. It's a sense of peacefulness. I'm peaceful. It's a sense of being, listen to this word, untroubled. Now, in the midst of trouble, he wrote this during the Depression, where people's lives were going to peace, pieces on the outside. But Reinhold Niebuhr was showing us how we can have peace on the inside, which I think helps us define what peace is. Many times we think that peace is the absence of trouble. If I can remove the trouble from my life, then I will have peace. 
But peace is not the absence of trouble. Peace is the presence of God. And God, when God is present in our lives, is able to give us peace when life is going to pieces. Now, the serenity prayer that we're going to look at, the first four lines, um, is basically a three-part prayer, three parts to the prayer. First of all, there is an acknowledgement that, um, uh, that we have to accept, acknowledge and accept what we cannot change. There are some things in this world that we want to change, we wish we could change, but we have to acknowledge and accept in life what we cannot change. First, acknowledge it and then accept it. Uh, you cannot change for the, for the fact um, what color you are, your height. Uh, you cannot change what family you were born into. You cannot, uh, you cannot change the fact that some people will not like you and some people will not accept you. And the, the, the key to serenity or peace or spirit of untroubledness is to say, I have to acknowledge that regardless of what I do, I have to acknowledge and accept the fact that there's some things and some people that I cannot change. And then the second part of the prayer that we're going to look at this week is act courageously to change the changeable. While there are things we cannot change, there are things in life that we can change. And guess what it takes to change the changeable? It takes courage. God Give me the serenity to accept, to accept the things I cannot change, the courage, because it's going to take courage to get some things changed in our life and in our world. And then finally, which is the most difficult part of the prayer, pray for wisdom to distinguish between the two. God grant me the serenity to, to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to put the two categories, two separate categories. Then I have a category which says, I can't change these things. Then I have another category in which, hey, I can change these things. And knowing what things in our life to put into what grouping takes wisdom and God gives us wisdom to distinguish between those two facts. Whenever you are facing out of control situations and you will face some out of those control situations, I highly recommend this serenity prayer. And never forget this. And that's why it starts off in the first line talking about God. God, God, in fact, God's the, the first word in the prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And here's something that you should never forget, which we will talk about this week. And that is that when you're facing something in your life that is totally out of control, know that God is still in control. Don't forget that, that God is still in the control and God has a plan for your life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for um, this initial lesson on the serenity prayer and um, help us to begin to pray this prayer and really mean it and live by it. Grant us serenity and peace and calmness and a sense of untroubledness. Uh, give us that peace that passes all understanding, peace that nothing can steal from us, even when life is going to pieces. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so very much for being with me with another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, everybody needs a church home. I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. You can become a digital member. You don't have to live in Louisville to connect with the church. So just email us here, newstart at Live. Dot org, newstart newstartsslive.org. I want to thank you so much for being with me. We're going to pick up on this theme again tomorrow. But until then, please remember today to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget God is in, the, is in control. That's the true path to serenity. I'll see you tomorrow.